What's up, I'm a Power Axe crew. Today's video, well, look real close. Look right here. Rust bucket has springs again. Yes! We're putting in the stretch. Now, just got it clamped in place right now and took my little angle finder, zeroed it out to this plane right here. This top surface is zero degrees. Now, when I pulled the XJ springs, Jeep Cherokee XJ, when I pulled those, what I went ahead and done after I got them out, I measured on the frame of the Jeep Cherokee, center to center of the eyes of the frame itself, 51 inches from center to center. So what I plan on doing is measuring from the center of this to back here, 51 inches, to see where these tabs are gonna fall in at. Get my welder, tack these right here in place on the ends, that'll hold the width in place, pull the mount off, burn the weld in. Got the spring hanger all welded up. I've got a bead on the inside, bead outside to make sure it's good and strong. And stuck the Cherokee leaf in there and discovered, look at here, we got issues. We got a massive gap going on right here. Now let's show you something about the uh, Jeep Cherokee leaves, XJ leaves. From this end here to your pad here, your mounting pad for your rear diff, you've got your centering bolt. This length here is longer than this point here to this point here. Whenever you do your stretch using Cherokee leaves, you want your small end here to be toward the front. Because this puts your rear diff back here, pushing it backwards. But the catch is, this end right here, you have a smaller bushing than this end. This end right here is about three inches or so, just probably about three and an eighth or so. This right here, two and by five eighths, I think that's why I measured that. But this is three inch. So what we got here is that gap. So I stuck a piece of three sticks in there and said, oh, look at that, not gonna fly, a little too loose. Quarter inch, I can make that work. I can shave that quarter inch down a little bit to get a good tight fit. So it doesn't move around a lot and shim that back. So it looks like that's what I'm gonna have to do. And there we go. Took a piece of that quarter inch, cut me a small piece, enough to kind of overhang it a little bit, run me a bead around it, then took and shaped it with the grinder, then done me a little uh, angle right here, a little chamfer, so the leaf spring will have an easy way to slide in, center itself. Now, it's one thing some of you guys are going to be bringing up if you know a little bit about the geometry of leaf springs, that now my leaf spring is offset this way. That's okay. Because remember, back in the back end, I will be doing these right here. So all I gotta do is offset my tube by that thickness of that quarter inch, and then my leaves are back in line. And also remember, I'm doing an 8.8 .8 conversion, which I will be putting custom uh, spring mounts, perches on it, and I can accommodate that as well. So this is a full on custom build. So me offsetting that over a little bit. Been a full-on custom build for the back end of it. Me offsetting that quarter inch doesn't hurt anything because I can offset everything else that quarter inch and make everything work as it should. Cool. Okay, I've got it set back in. It's all leveled up. Took my angle finder. Got it right here. And once I drove it back upward where I wanted it, I wanted this lip no, above this right here into the good solid metal. Then I put my angle finder here. It's zeroed out, which means it's flat this way. But you gotta watch this right here, make sure it's not like this. So my angle finder says, and it is, come on, get on with it. Zeroed that way. So once you get to depth of how far you wind up on the frame, you can take your bolt, a big heavy bolt right here. If you wanna rock it down this way, put your bolt right there, take a hammer, lightly tap it. It'll rock it down this way, or if you want to you know, tilt down this way, come in this side, hold up on this right here so it doesn't uh, beat around and rattle. Tap it right here, it'll bring it down this way. And But just don't get to a really crazy hit with a hammer because you can easily knock it right back off the frame. Before I weld, did all the welding up the side here and stuff, it drew up a little bit, it kind of squeezed, squeezed it in just a little bit. So I had to take my grinder just inside that edge right there and probably knock, I don't know, 30 seconds of an inch off each side of it right there to get it back up on there because it was a, uh, I mean, I was beating on it, it didn't want to move, so I had to shave it just a little bit. So apparently my metal grew inward just a little bit by running those beads inside there. So now that I've got this set in place where I want it, I'm gonna run me a tack 
welds through here I'm not gonna burn it in completely until I get front and rear mounts in place leaf hanging in place until that'll show me like okay everything's copacetic I'm ready to burn it in cool all right so I'm gonna so this right here doesn't move on me. I'm going to run me just a couple beads. Run me a bead here, here, back here. Just four of them. One here, one here, and two on that side. Now we start putting my rear hangers in. I took right through here. You can see where the grinder is. Cleaned all that metal back. Cleaned that metal up real well because you want a clean, clean weld right through here. This is all about the strength, people. Take a run your clean uh, grind up the side here because you're going to have to weld back up the side here as well. So clean that metal. Now, good flat surface right here, magnet. Goes flat against this, goes flat against this, which holds it out flush for this right here. So I'm gonna take my take my bead, run inside there, fill that completely in, make it nice and smooth and flush. Now I'll take my other one on the other side and do the same thing. There's one spring hanging. Got that boat went through pretty good, even after my little spacer trick over here. Got that going on. My boom shackles are in place and in the correct orientation because I showed you guys earlier and that they were actually wrong. I haven't welded this part in yet. But I got those right there. You got this one welded in. This back side's tacked in. My welder being a pain in the butt, so I gotta change the tip. Uh, so what's gotta happen here? Well, I showed you guys describing what they gotta do, so I get I actually had this particular system wrong. This is correct because whenever you go to full drop on this sleeve. It's going to stretch this out. What you want to prevent is this right here coming back and inverting and your leaf snapping up into here. This, when I get a bolt run through here and get a brace put in, I'm not 100% sure yet until I test it. Will this be enough? I may have to put something like right along in here for this bolt to hit against to prevent that spring from uh, going up into here and locking back. So I'll have to test that a little bit later. So let's get on the other side. Before we get started, there's one thing for sure we need to make sure happens. Spring placement. Each side has to be perfect. Because if you get your spring placement, and say this leaf right here happens to come backward a little bit, what that's going to do is make your rear div sit at an angle because this is going to be out of line. That is the centering right here to where your spring perch is set on for your uh, rear div. Now, if I was to accidentally set the driver's side back, say a half inch further back on that side, Versus this side, what that'll do is if it's half it further back, it's gonna make my rear end cant this way. And it'll make the, the back end will always wanna pull off to the left. So you don't wanna do that. Now, as far as spring height here, eh, not quite as critical, but still, you wanna get make sure you get it as accurate as possible. So, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna do this? Hmm, let's figure this out. So, here is what my intentions were. I was going to take that bolt out right there, pull the rest of that bushing out, have the bolt go all the way through here, another bolt all the way through here, weld me a piece of metal from bolt head to bolt head to make me a jig, slide in here, slide in here. That would give me my proper spacing from here to here. Okay, the metal may be sitting at an angle like this, but that's okay, because all I got to do is get my angle finder, say, drop on top of it, match my angle, make sure everything's flat, level, blah, 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 and I was going to, it was an easy jig to set up. So, this bolt don't want to come out. I've got the nut off. The nut come off on the other side pretty easy. But the bolt, in typical fashion, is seized up inside the bushing here. You've got, here's the leaf spring. I cut this, I took a plasma cutter, sliced the leaf spring off right there. But inside that leaf eye, for people who don't know, is a rubber bushing. Then inside that is a metal sleeve. Typical fashion, that bolt is seized to that metal sleeve inside there. You know what? this liquid. I'm about to cut that baby out of there. And the head of the boat is gone. Took the plasma cutter, kept shaving the metal, shaving the head off the boat. Final little bit, took the grinder, kind of grinded down to where it was, uh, you can see the circle where the bolt and the bracket is. Both sides are like that, so at this point I'm going to take the pry bar or something, get up inside here, and wedge that apart enough that that bolt should be able to knock through that bracket. So. That's what I gotta do to it next. I'm gonna beat and fuss at it. Okay, I kept taking my screwdriver. That you can tell it gets used for a chisel a lot. Kept driving it in between, in behind here, in behind here, and I pulled back on it like this to keep wedging on it to break it loose from that metal right there because it was actually seized as well. 
So once I got to break loose, and now it's kind of almost out. See if we can get lucky, wedge it on out of there. That about there, about there. Ta da! Now we can make our jig. I ain't touching it. I almost grabbed it. We have a bolts in place here to establish our center lines. Okay, but we got geometry at play here. If you was to take this line right here, the center line of this bolt project it straight back this way, you would see that this center line of this hole right here is probably roughly three fourths of an inch or so lower than the center of this. So center line of this, center line of this, this was lower by about three fourths of an inch or so. Obviously, it's back this way. Now, I have no idea what dimensions because the trick I'm going to show you guys is that it doesn't matter what the dimension is. Bolt, bolt, establish your center line, piece of flat metal. What you want to do is, also, there's another uh, issue at play here. The plane here offsets out this way further than this one right here. So, again, now you got height this way, you got depth this way, and this way so actually on your XYZ and XYZ planes it goes everywhere so let's just make us a jig to get around all that mess so here's our basic concept but we can't just haphazardly stick that in there and just weld it in so oh, there we go we're done you know bad idea take your angle finder now get on top of that And we zero out our angle finder. Which is about right there. Okay, we got that plane zeroed out. Oh crap, I'm out of hands. Let me top my clamp up. Let's see if that's enough. Please don't move. I'm out of hand, stay it. Nope, one more clamp, one more clamp. Obviously, I want to double check that because it just moved. That gives me room to get my MIG in there to weld that. Clean the junk off my angle finder again. Let that zero out. And it's off by a little bit, but not a Give me something to tap it with. Oops. Right there. So, by doing this, it, it takes care of a few issues for us. Again, bolt here, bolt here, makes your center lines this way. Plus, this, lot, this hole right here is lower than this hole here by just a little bit. And then the plane of this way, this offsets out from this way. So what happens, using this flat stock, this center line here, I weld into here. Establishes with the flat stock. Now, when I run across here, the offset of this surface here sits on top of the bolt here, give me my plane this way, the depth to establish that. And plus, I can weld in right here, which locks in my two center lines. So on the X, Y, and Z plane, that gives me everything I need to establish center line to center line. So I'm gonna go grab my welder now weld those bolts to those to that flat stock and I will have made my jig all tacked in good and ready to go so just simply pull it out like this right here and now that will establish my center lines now some of you who are pretty sharp out there may have uh, may oh that's hot too ouch, 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 it's still hot 
Some of you out there that know the uh, fabrication game very well may call me out on something. I'm going to go ahead and call myself out. Whenever I mention about this being on this plane where it offsets out like this, on this, I can't take this jig and roll it around like this and come in from the other side like that because of the offset it being different. When I get this fabricated from that side, you'll see when I do it here in a bit. But whenever I slide it in from this side, I'll have to slide it in from under the Jeep to keep my centers correct and my plane here being zeroed out. Otherwise, if I take it flip it around, it changes on my Z-axis here. So, I was waiting for you guys to call me out on that. But anyway, it'll work out. So now that baby right there is hot. I need to get this piece, get it prefabricated over for that while this cools down a little bit. And I laid my knuckle wide open right across through here. And yeah, where's it at the camera? Can't see it anyway. I laid my knuckle open right through there. And these gloves are nasty as crap. So yeah. I keep wanting to pull that out. I know darn well it's hot. I'm gonna get away from it before I do something stupid. I've got the passenger side tacked in. Let's work on the driver's side. But before I get started on this driver's side, I want to point out something about the parts I'm using. And also, before I even get this thing started, this uh, about the parts I'm using, they did not sponsor me these parts. I paid for these parts out of my pocket, okay? Straight up, paid for them. But the reason I wanted to give the shout out to them or give you guys actually a heads up about quality parts is the fact these things are beast, people. Check it out. Boom shack shackles, 3 8 thick. These work with these to make a bushing. These are your tabs, this goes inside there, you weld them in, then you got a bushing mount. Quarter inch. Look at that. And this kit right here, that's your, that's your uh, spring mount for the front, for these springs. Again, quarter inch, good stuff. So you can't go wrong with these parts. You, no, this is my 93 model build, and my, even my 91. It's, my 91 doesn't get mod as much as my 93 does. Motor built, can't go wrong. Check them out, good stuff. Here's the rear shackles on my 91. Check out the difference. I mean, just massive difference. Yeah, what I did, took the grinder and just kind of went along that edge right there. Grind some of that material back, grind some of that material back. Therefore, it gives me a little bit more space width right here for it to slide up on the frame. Much better. We're good to go. Now I'm going to take my MIG, put me a couple little uh, spot welds in there, we'll be good to go. A couple quick tacks, one there, one there, and, what, and same on the other side. Now, once I'm happy with everything, I'll go ahead and burn a good solid bead in here, and I'll also cut those spring hangers off. Now, the next thing we got to do, this little tool I'm using right here, this is one of those magnetic tool holders from Harbor Freight. Works really well for holding metal flush against, you know, like flush here, flush here. Uh, one thing you want to be careful of, though, because the magnet is recessed inside this bar, so if you get it, like, hanging off here or something like that, watch this. Uh, uh, slide, dang it. Like that, and let's put this back flush. So what happens is this is now canted this way, and it's got the metal pulling outward this way, so it's not flush as it should be, like flush back here and here. The bracket's actually sitting like this now. So you want to take make sure this is sitting flat on that. And also this tab, you want to be sure that it's sitting with it coming back all the way on this side here. Because same thing can happen. This will recess back inside where that magnet is sunk inside this metal. It'll cause it to sit like that. So get that line. So now what I need to do is measure from center line of this to center line there. And be sure that's about 50 inches. It should be because it's the same setting over there. So I'm going to measure it up real quick. If so, I'm going to tack that in. On the inside tab, I went ahead and ran the bead. And what happened? Look at there. We have light. We should not have light because remember we made that flush along with that tubing so the heat from the weld pulled the tab inward 
So what I'm going to do is take my hammer, tap that thing back out there, get it flush again, and then burn my weld in right through there. Well, I made my first pass. You can see right here where I took a wire brush, kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Because when I was going this way, I couldn't see my weld pool as, as well. Because having to pause, the wire let it fill up inside that trough. So I went this way. I started pushing my bead this way. When I was pushing it, I would pause for a second, let the wire fill up the gap, come back around a circle, let the wire fill up the gap, let the circle come back around, and just keep continuing like that. That way I've got my weld deep down inside that trough through here. So now I'm going to take my grinder, flush that out a little bit, come back and run another pass over top of it to fill it in, because I want that to be smooth all the way up down through here. And to does, she's all smooth. Now I just got to weld the other one in. But what I'm going to do now, I need to press this centerpiece out and get the bushings out because what you don't want to do is weld your tubing here with the bushings in. I know some people are going to say, well, duh, that's elementary. But some, no, some people who've never done fab work may throw it in there and not think anything about it. Then when you start welding up on this thing right here, the next thing you know, your bushings are melting on the other side. Then you got to try and order more. So, yeah, don't do that. Now, over there, I don't have that welded in. I was just pretty much setting it up for mock-up. That up there is... Uh, just uh, ta uh, tacked in. Back here, these are welded in, but I've just got the bushes set down. So you can see how it's just floating back and forth. So what I'll have to do, as I mentioned on the other one, I'll have to pull all this right here back apart and pull the bushes out of it, set this tube right here where I'll need it, then weld that thing in place, then I can put my bushes back in place. So, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this other tab set up so I can get just ready to go. Now as I mentioned, you don't want to weld on this right here with your bushings in here. So what you need to do to get your bushings out, take you a corner like this, position it, because what you're doing, you put this metal ring right here against that corner, you push, it'll pop that out a little bit so you can get a good bite on it. Then we're going to take a screwdriver and look at those ridges right there. If you get in between the ridges right here and just tap it, be careful on it because you don't want to gouge your bushing but if you just tap it that collar right there that sleeve will actually push right out of there so find you something that you can set it against like on top of this and i'll tap on this if i can actually pull this off here uh, so top of this see how the bushing's coming out i'm having a hard time seeing what the camera sees it's light out here Just about there. And there it goes. Now if you see inside there, those grooves, I was walking along those grooves and once I got to a certain point, I can turn my screwdriver sideways with the blade like this. Don't go a hard angle. Because then you can be digging into your bushing. Just set it on top of that sleeve and just push it down like that. Just tap it real lightly. And you can feel there's some light grease inside here, which it should be. So now at this point what we need to do is get, if you look, you can see inside there, maybe if the camera sees it, there's actually two bushings, one going this way and one going this way. So you want to separate those bushings out and get those bushings out of there. Now to get the bushings out of the sleeve, what you want to do is take a screwdriver, get in like right here, and just twist it gently. Go around it, because again, don't get crazy. You don't want to tear your bushes, so just gently do it. Actually, if you had a putty knife and get it here like it's sideways and do it, you'd be less likely to damage your bushing. Gently just walk around it. Then once you get to a certain point, then you turn your screwdriver sideways. Walk it out a little more. And just maybe. Ta da! There you go, one bushing out. Now, for your other side, let's do the same thing. And do you see how easy that slid up? You just take a come up push right here. Stay. There you go. Then you got nothing but tube. Now, having nothing but tube at this point, whenever we put them inside the sleeves, down, inside the tabs to weld them in, you won't damage your bushings. Then once you get everything fabricated up like you want it, put your bushings back in, then put your sleeve back. Put your uh, metal sleeve back in. This thing right here. Cool. There you go.
Okay, we're gonna slide our tube in and to line up the second tab. What? It won't go in. Why will it not go in? This is what the downsides use using flux core MIG welders, the splatter, and right there is a little piece of splatter. So what if you run into something like that, screwdriver. Most of the time you pop them right off. There he goes. Right, Look at that beautiful fit. I mean, that is just like perfect. So now I can take my tab over here on the other side, take my magnet, and flush it out. And that helps everything be properly aligned because if you get this bushing right here, all caddy wop is crooked or something, what it's going to do is going to have your bushings in a bind all the time because if you weld them in crooked, you know, if it's sitting like this, then your bushing is going to be all in a bind. So you want to keep this straight and put in your second tab right here. It keeps everything just proper. Ran my beads to the inside, got them welded in good. This right here is still hot. The other side's cooled off, so it's time to put the bushings in it. And to put the bushings back in, just simply take, slide them in. Of course, when I get ready to paint the frame, I'll be uh, pulling them back out and greasing them after I get through painting. If you put the uh, sleeve back in, put your bolt in there first, then hit the bolt with the hammer. Then you're less likely to booger up the edge of that and have an edge for catching your bolt and stuff. So, here we go. Got that bushing put in. Now I'm gonna hang my spring on this side. Okay, let's look over the stretch that I just put in. Now here's the deal. With the spring hanger, spring hanger right there, if you see my measure tape, that is where the centering bolt is, the rear differential hangs at. Those are Jeep Cherokee springs. Jeep Cherokee springs, XJ springs, from center to center here are longer than the YJs. Not only that, where a YJ, the centering bolt is in the middle of the spring. So with your XJ spring being longer, and the bolt is offset with inside the spring by putting the small eye up front, the big eye in back, you actually move your spring axle back four inches. Now, spring perch right here, welded in these spring mounts, motor builts, awesome stuff. Right there's the factory one, right there's the motor built. That from center line to this to center line to that is seven inches. So seven here plus four, I got 11 inches of stretch going back. Uh, why did I do it? Well, mostly because I felt like it. But I'm going to do something to the cab. I want to make it wrap around, come back, and I want a short little flatbed back here. Not only that, once I started tearing into the back end right here, there was so much rust that the whole back end of the frame was actually just, it was done for. It was so rotten. There was no saving it, really. So I rummaged through all my scrap metal pile. I had that steel. I had a bunch of plate that I could wrap the frame with. So honestly, for its cost, I, you know, it did cost me a whole lot other than buying the motor bill parts. So, and also what we've got going in here is going to be an 8.8 .8 rear end. Um, my bolts are supposed to be in tomorrow. So I have to change the centering bolts here. And I'll explain that when I put the rear end in. But, in a nutshell, that completes the stretch. Next point, next thing we're doing is putting the rear differential in.
after repairing all that rust issue on this back half that I ran into, I finally get my stretch put in. And I am so happy to see progress on this thing. So if you guys enjoyed this video, thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave some cool comments down below. And there will be more videos spawning off this. I still got to put the 8.8 .8 in. I'm going to do a little bit of video on how the, shackle, how the boom shackles and what they do and how they work and why you need them. So you might want to subscribe. Might just learn something. Okay, sweet. Everyone, thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you have it. Comment down below. Peace out. Later, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. Peace. Bonus footage. End of the video showing that the stretch is welded in, but look where it's actually at at the moment. The 8.8 .8 is bolted in. Pinion angle is not set. But my spring perches are just sitting there at the moment. I still got to set my pinion angle. Spring perches from uh, Rough Stuff Specialties. Super solid stuff. You'll see the video when it comes out when I prep the 8.8. .8. Got the pinion angle set and kind of sort of where it should be shooting up toward the transfer case with the stretch and the uh, slip yoke eliminator installed. There you go. That's where she's actually at the moment, which means there's more videos to come. Be sure you subscribe.